you know, my point is that, you know, we know that uh, not everybody responds to the checkpoint inhibitors, not every patient, not, uh, not every type of tumor is as sensitive as melanoma or kidney cancer. There are some tumors which are really difficult, you know, to help these patients with checkpoint inhibitors, only a small percentage response. So you need to combine. And uh, when you think about what to combine, uh, the uh, local regional therapies can really turn uh, the tumors which are immunologically uh, cold, you know, they are not visible to the immune system, they are tolerogenic into the uh, tumors which will elicit the appropriate uh, killing uh, tumor response. And uh, the way I approach that problem, you know, in uh, the real life, uh, I actually am engaged in multiple trials with local regional therapies. I actually uh, am engaged in trials with uh, the uh, specific agents, which is Omid Hamid's point. Uh, and I'm also engaged in uh, trials with uh, oncolytic viruses. And uh, pretty soon uh, I will be uh, conducting a trial with the resurrection of uh, colitoxin, which was actually one of the first, if not the very first, uh, uh, historically uh, immunotherapy for patients in the 19th century uh, in the US. Uh, Dr. Coley used uh, bacterial toxins to elicit immune response local regionally. And uh, there are people who try to resurrect that approach with a new twist. Uh, because, you know, my point is that uh, it is hard to know which exactly pathway is needed to be activated for a specific tumor. Um, and we are lacking a really good biomarkers for selection uh, for immunotherapy, you know, that has hampered our further progress after the PD-1 breakthrough or, you know, CTLA-4, PD-1. Um, you know, recently other checkpoints are coming to the forefront, you know, that is really good to see. But still, um, you know, we will need to be able to, uh, to change the microenvironment and engage multiple, um, multiple immune cells, not just T cells, uh, but also dendritic cells, macrophages, B cells. There was a great talk yesterday about the role of uh, tertiary lymphoid structures or the great debate. And um, the, uh, the, the immune system is uh, naturally primed to kill pathogens. You know, it was developed, you know, actually to protect us from things like uh, gram-negative bacteria um, or uh, TB or other, uh, you know, bad infectious diseases, you know, which in the historical past were a lot more killing than cancer. People simply didn't live long enough to, to die from cancer. And uh, so harnessing that old system, starting with a virus or something derived from uh, bacteria, I think may actually be uh, more broad and uh, and a more complex, you know, bringing in all these uh, all these arms of the immune attack together, uh, those cells then will produce these specific cytokines or specific uh, to like receptor agonists because that's part of the innate immune response. You know, then subsequently activate the uh, adaptive immunity and uh, and and hopefully kill the tumor. Uh, uh, that's my point because uh, it is very hard to know if a, what specific cytokine or what specific to like receptor agonist may be appropriate for that particular patient. If there was a better patient um, biomarker selection, I would say that actually uh, using that specific agent uh, might be preferential, but without a good biomarker, uh, my point is it's better to go broad and uh, use the body as a selection system to basically use the pieces of the activated pathways uh, as it needs to go and, uh, and hopefully kill the tumor. Um, you know, it may not be at the end, you know, the answer, uh, but this is what I believe. But uh, I also believe that uh, support for clinical trials and also keeping the mind open and uh, being in a good way opportunistic is very important so we can achieve cure for cancer for majority, if not all people uh, in the near future.